Welcome back to our program. You know, as we uh, visit our doctors and they make suggestions on how to improve our quality of life and our health, and they'll suggest maybe some diet changes or some exercises. But uh, sometimes they also say, uh, I want you to take a certain medication. And you go to the pharmacy and you get a little bottle like this, which has a little label on it, and it's got things inside of it. And it gives you some instructions and information on that. And supposedly we take those, and supposedly it makes us better. Well, our next guest is an expert in that field. We're joined today by one of the pharmacists from Kaiser Permanente, uh, Jalpa Patel, a doctor of pharmacy, is with us. Welcome to the show. Thank you. A little bit about your background, how you got into the pharmacy uh, business. Okay, well, I'm actually originally from Chicago, so I did my undergrad at Loyola University Chicago, went to pharmacy school at Midwestern University Chicago College of Pharmacy, and then decided to pursue a clinical residency out um, in California with Kaiser, so definitely very happy to be here, and mm -hmm. I've learned a lot. So it's obviously, been a great experience so Obviously, far. Kaiser works out well for you and decided yes. to stay and, uh, and go to work for him, which, yeah. is, which is great. Yeah. Um, we want to talk today about something called uh, medication compliance. Okay. Um, from the pharmacist standpoint, maybe you could give us a definition of that. Okay, so medication non-compliance is basically when medic uh, patients don't take their medications on time at the dosages that are prescribed by their physician and roughly 50 to 75 percent of the patients in the United States are actually non-compliant with their medications and surprisingly 60 percent of these patients are not able to identify their own medications so if a physician or a healthcare professional were to go up to them and said okay so you're taking this medication for what they actually would not be able to you know tell us and then surprisingly 15 to 20 percent of the patients when they walk out of the hospital with a prescription or walk out you know of the clinic with a the prescription they never get it filled so it's it's very shocking but medication non-compliance is definitely a huge problem in the United States do, the, do we know do they get them filled because they don't want to pay the cost do they get it not filled because they think, oh, well, I'll feel better anyway? Do we know what the background is for them not even getting it to start with? Okay, so, I mean, there's so many different reasons why patients are non-compliant with their medications. The first and foremost reason is because they feel like they don't have any symptoms. There's so many disease states and conditions such as, you know, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, where they feel perfectly fine. They feel like they can go out for a walk and, you know, they can play with their grandchildren they don't have a problem, so they are like, why do I need this medication? Mm -hmm. um, secondly, some patients are just really burnt out when they have chronic conditions such as diabetes or arthritis, where they've been taking medications for a long period of time, and there reaches a point where they just don't want to take it anymore. And I mean, there's some patients that have mental impairments, such as you know, Alzheimer patients or um, psychiatric illnesses, where they just often forget to take their medications, um, mm -hmm. or they don't have family members to remind them to take their medications on time. Yeah. So there's many different reasons. Yeah. So. so it sounds like it's a pretty widespread problem. Uh, do you see that becoming uh, less of a problem? Are people becoming better informed or is the problem getting worse? I feel like the problem has been pretty consistent, but I think nowadays with you know prevention tools that we've you know come up with, I think it's getting a little better. And I think um, patients are taking a more active interest in their health, which is definitely important. And I think if patients and individuals really understood the importance of why they're taking these medications, so for example, you know if I take an aspirin to help me prevent a heart attack in the future, so if they understand the mechanism behind each medication and understand why it's beneficial for them, I think patients will be more motivated and more are willing to take their medications on time. Whose responsibility is it? Is it the doctor's responsibility? Does the doctor pass that off to the nurse or the uh, nurse practitioner? Or has it become the pharmacist's responsibility? Whose job is it to tell me what's in here and why I should, when I should take it and why? Okay, well, personally, I think it's the pharmacist's responsibility because we are the medication experts. So when the patients or individuals come into our pharmacy, you know, it is our responsibility to tell them, okay, this is the medication, this is the name of it, this is what it's commonly used for, um, these are some of the side effects that you might experience, um, this is what you do in case you do experience some side effects. So, you know, pharmacists are the medication experts, so if they do have any questions, you know, I would call a pharmacist or call a local pharmacy and ask, but in the and I think it's a patient's responsibility to be able to be compliant with their medications. They need to take that active interest in their own health to you know, help them improve their illness or disease state, whatever it may be. Are there tricks or things or available on the market or, or ways we can help to be uh, 
do a better job of being reminded, especially if we've run, as many people are, multiple medications. Definitely. There's actually many different tools that patients can use to help them remember to take their medications. The first one, um, pill boxes. A lot of patients are familiar with these. You can get them at any pharmacy, any drugstore, and they come in, you know, seven days um, or they come in a month's supply. So, you know, they can put all their medications in there, remember to take it every day. Also, another thing that I found really helpful with my patients is that they can leave notes for themselves. So, for example, if they know that they need to take a certain medication, in the morning right when they get up. Perhaps they can put a post-it note on their bathroom mirror wall to remind them that they need to take this. Or if they take it with food, maybe perhaps put a little post-it on their refrigerator or even on their orange juice bottle, whatever it may be, just okay. to help them yeah. you know, remember that I need to take this medication at this time. Right. Also, there's a lot of alarms. You know, they can put an alarm on their beeper, on their pager, on their cell phone, even at their home alarm, or use some sort of diary or planner to, you know, write down all their medications that they're on and what time they need yeah. to take them. And I think the best one is just family and friends. Just right. have, you know, your families or your friends just, you know, give you a call or just tap you on the shoulder and be like, hey, you know, aren't you supposed to take this medication right now? Yeah. So I yeah. think definitely if you have the support of family and friends, that's a great tool. What about if we oops? What about if we miss it? You know, we the note, the post it fell mm -hmm. off my mirror in the morning right. and I didn't take that one pill before breakfast. Okay. Should I take it after breakfast? Should I call the doctor? Should I just wait and do it tomorrow? Mm -hmm. I guess it depends on the medication. It really depends on the medication. Some medications, if you miss a dose, you take it as soon as you remember. But if it's getting close to the next dose, we usually tell our patients not to double up on mm -hmm. the dose. So it really just, it's you know, dependent on each medication. And right. if they really are concerned, they're more than welcome to call their local pharmacy and ask, hey, I forgot to take this medication. What should I do? And the pharmacist will be able to tell right. them. We, uh, we find that uh, a lot of us today see more than one doctor. Right. Maybe a primary yeah. care physician and then a series of specialists possibly mm -hmm. and yeah. now subspecialists and sub yeah. subspecialists yeah. along the way. <laughs> yeah. And Dr. A may prescribe something, Dr. B may mm -hmm. prescribe something, Dr. C may prescribe something. Right. Um, they come into the pharmacy at different times in different mm -hmm. illegible scribble, doctor scribble, right. and you have to interpret them and, and, and get them together. Mm -hmm. Do you ever look and see, you know, Dr. A prescribed this and Dr. C prescribed this. These two things are going to possibly interreact. Are there possible times where you want to maybe call the doctor and say, right. can we substitute this for this because there will be the interaction? Oh, definitely. Um, all the prescriptions that we fill, we you know we verify them and they go through a computer program to check for any sort of interaction. So we do have a medication profile for each you know one of our patients, and we screen you know are they on duplicate medications? Do we need to switch you know any one of these therapies? And that's why I think it's really important for patients to use one particular pharmacy because when they start using multiple pharmacies, we can't really catch those interactions because we don't have the full medication profile ready um, available to us. So it's very important that the patients use one pharmacy. So we have all the medications that are on any allergies or any other medical information that can help us, you know, better fill the prescription for the patient. So it's very important. And also another tool patients can use is just carry a list of medications with you everywhere you go. So any doctor that you see, specialty or primary care physician, just be like, this is the active, you know, list of medications that I'm taking. And then that'll give a, you know, better idea for the physicians that, okay, maybe they're already on this medication. So, and a lot of hospitals, for example, Kaiser Permanente, we have a uh, electronic medical record. So we can actually see on the computer what medications the patients are currently right. taking. So. A lot of good, uh, lot of yeah. good high tech tools to help yeah. us, but the ultimate responsibility, I guess, is us to, uh, pick that up, read the label. If we don't understand it, maybe call the pharmacy back definitely, and say, definitely. this isn't clear or whatever. Yeah. And then the other trick is trying to pronounce the name when we reorder it. <laughs> you can always spell it out. Spell it. It's probably <laughs> easier for you. Yeah, yeah very good. Yeah, definitely. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you for good having me. It was a pleasure. Yeah. If you want to find out more about Kaiser and how their good medical programs can benefit you, give them a call. The local phone number right here in Orange County, 932-2052. And as always, they bring us our program each Thursday here on Channel 6. We'll be right back with more. Stay with us.